Hi there, it's Helen from Slim and Stylish and I'm a stamping up demonstrator in the UK and today's advent tutorial is this gorgeous little box card. I haven't really decorated it on the outside but when you open it up, I've decorated it like this with the Year of Cheer Suite and I've put, I don't know whether you can see it, I have put a great big dolloping of Wink Stella all over that for glitter. Inside I've used our glimmer paper and the Seasonal Chums Stamps and Tags set. I've used our tin foil here with a little hanging tag and decorated that all up. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. But firstly, I'm going to give you an apology. I have cut a lot of this pre-ready so I can get it all in a video that's shorter than the half hour or so I took making this box. And in doing it, when I ran my pieces through the big shot, this gorgeous little tree, I don't know whether you can see it here, the die and the tree has fell in between my desk and my chest of drawers next to my desk and I'm not feeling strong enough to be able to move them. So I do apologise, the card I'm going to make doesn't have this tree but please bear in mind the set does have this tree and all I've done with it here is just coloured it in old of olive watercolour pen and gone over it with my blender pen which is what I'm going to do to the others but yeah, this tree which is great because it's got these little holes in so you can put some designer series paper and make a bauble tree. I don't have it anymore. I'll have to get it back. I did like it. And this set, I believe, isn't retiring. It's not on the retiring list, so I'll need it for next year. So the set comes with the snowman framelit, the Rudolph framelit. It comes with a tag framelit, the two um, snowflakes, uh, the tree and also just in case you're in America or someone who's who does celebrate Halloween it comes with the pumpkin the spider's web the tr the leaf and the bat I'm not big on Halloween we don't really celebrate it here um, so I haven't used those but they're cute so I've already made Rudolph I've gone over him with watercolor pencils and the blender pen and I've done this star with this star and this tag and all I've done is cut them out of Whisper White and I've gone over them with the Winker Stella a couple of coats so that it sparkles like that and it warped the paper but I just put the the case on top of them for a few seconds and it's flattened them again so I'm going to show you how to do the snowman so we can get the elements made up and then how we do the rest of the card so I'll just put those to the side because I've already done those bits just bringing in a bit of whisper white it doesn't matter what size it is well sort of it's about two and a quarter inches that you need for the snowman okay so as so long as it's bigger than that it's okay I'm just gonna take my memento ink pad I've already put this on an e-block it does fit completely in its entirety on an e-block which is when it's askew um, let me just show you with Rudolph on the other side it does fit However, I only want to use this part of it. I don't want to be using that part. So I want him in the centre so that I can push clearly on him. So I've just mounted him off the off the block. Right, so push him down. He's so cute. So I'm going to bring in my Big Shot. I don't have a Stampin' Up! Big Shot. I have this one which I've had for years. Um, Stampin' Up! Do do them. However, if you're going to look at buying a Big Shot or getting a Big Shot, you really want a magnetic platform. I haven't got it. I got this one before the magnetic platforms have come out. That's how old it is. But a magnetic platform just makes everything better. Okay, there is a front and back to this die. You need the tag hole on his rabbit side. And it just fits over. Now, if you've got a magnetic platform, this will stay exactly where you want it. As I said, I haven't got a magnetic platform, but I do have post-it notes. So my way of getting it to stay is I just stick a post-it note. These are so handy. If you're a crafter, you just need post-it notes around, don't you? There, there is no scenario that can't be made better without the post-it notes. Put that in and just run it through. Run it back quickly. 
only needs to go through once I've run it back because I don't really have enough room on the other side. The end of my desk is just probably about four inches past where my hand is. Pull him off. And then all I'm going to do with him, if I'd have pushed it all the way through, that would have done the back of it. It's just I didn't push it all the way through because I only want him here. So I'm just going to cut around his hat like that. Saves me fussy cutting all of him. And there's my snowman. Isn't he cute? Love it. So I'm going to come in with the watercolour pens and my blender pen. I'm just going to keep the scrap piece of Whisper White handy to run my blender pen off. You see, I was using Bermuda Bay before. Okay, the grey. I was going to colour them in with my stamp and blends. I've done a lot of colouring with my stamp and blends this year, but I didn't purely because the stamp and blends are a, a bright colour. This is just a subtle sort of hint of colour, really. I don't want him to be to be too bright. Come in with melon mambo, I think, up here. I used melon mambo before, and then. Do I need another member of No, that's all. A bit of green. Now all I'm doing with the watercolour pens is I am not colouring the whole part of it. I don't know whether you can see. I'm only colouring a bit and then I'm just... Let me rub my blender pen off. Letting the blender pen spread the colour around. Because I don't want it ridiculously bright. And then just to clean it off between each colour, just run a couple of wiggles down your spare piece of paper so Bermuda Bay I'm going to use for his scarf because my fold up card's going to be Bermuda Bay rather than Melon Mambo which I used before so I think this card's going to be for my brother and the Melon Mambo one's going to be for my nan so we've got a boy card and a girl card now, what am I going to do to get some colours going here? <coughs> Use a bit of Pacific Point through it. Just a, a light dash of it. And with the blender pen this time, I'm just going to run it through all of those so it brings the colour together. I'll mix both of them in. Okay, so can you see how it's just changed it? I'm just going to do that down the scarf as well. Okay. I'm going to do the same ones on his gloves. Like I said, I'm really not doing this neat. This is what I, I like about using the watercolour pens. You don't have to be neat with them at all. You just have to put a few squiggles in and the blender pen does the rest. Or the aqua marker if you're doing a big space, the aqua marker is always handy as well. So gently let's merge that in. Okay. And his nose. We'll do in the orange. I'll give him some proper blue eyes so that they're gleaming. Oh, and I'll also give him a blue band on his hat. Because you know, your hat's got to match its scarf and gloves, right? Finally, I'll just colour the bunny in. So this is all I did with the reindeer. Um, I just used the watercolour pens and the blender tool. Colour that in. And then came across with the wink of Stella and I wasn't even tidy I just went straight over all of it to give it that gorgeously gorgeous glittery effect so I'm just going to leave that to dry around the sides of the card I used the year of cheer sweet and I coloured it in now you need 
three pieces that are two and six, no, sorry, two and five eighths of an inch by two and five eighths of an inch squared. And then another one that is two and five eighths of an inch by just over four inches. Okay, so what I did with these is I came in with the Bermuda Bay pen and I just put some random colour. I didn't really do this tidily or neatly or think about where I was putting the colour, just anywhere where there was a little hole on the snowflake, I just put the colour. Let's put a line upon each of those. And I'm just going to do those on that as well. the middle instead. For anyone who's OCD about where all of these go this is going to drive you nuts because I don't even do any sort of pattern with it I just dotted it wherever and the next one might not be the same method that I was using but not all these snowflakes are the same pattern so it's a bit hard to, to get a method going with it. And this one. To finish it off. And then all I did was come in with the blender pen again, exactly the same as what I've just done with the snowman. And I just grabbed the colour and shifted it around. I did a tag this week with the aqua marker and a pink, but that to me just looked really, it was great for what I was going for. I was going for a watercolour puddled effect, so that was great. But here I'm just going for an increasing effect rather than just one splodge. So that's why I'm using my blender pen. The nice thing about this paper as well is that you can change whichever colour you want to put with it. So I've gone from Melon Mambo to Bermuda Bay. Both cards are going to look the same, but the DSP I haven't had to change. I can still use this silver and gold one. It looks just as good in both projects. Reminds me, a couple of years ago, there was a paper that was, um, well, it was white, but it had sort of raised embossed bits on it, which was really pretty. And if you run watercolour or sponged over the top of it, it was gorgeous. And you could get away with doing that on that because it would go with any colour and it would change to the colour. It's the same as this. There's a black and white set coming up in the occasions catalogue. Um, for next year which is great a petal palette sweep and you'll be able to do that with that as well so you'll be able to do the same sort of idea as I'm doing now if you haven't got your occasions catalogue let me know I'll send it out to you I posted all of mine out last week but if you haven't got it you I'll put one in the post to you so those are my panels and again I just used my wink of Stella and I just ran it over the silver ones that I'd done I haven't decorated the gold ones at all I've left them as they are. I'm just done it so it gives them a really glittery effect. I don't know how well it shows up on the camera but they are really really glittery so I'm just going to put those all off to the side while we create the base. So I've got a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock however that's not the size that you need. There's my paper trimmer. You need a five and a half piece of cardstock by 12 inches. So five and a half inches by 12. Okay. When you've got that, you're going to want to go down to two and three quarters of an inch and score all the way along so it's like that 
And you're going to want to put it in this way at two and three quarters of an inch. So what you're going to do with this is you're going to use both sides of this. So this one here, this dark grey one, is the cutter. Up here, the crumb cake one is the scorer. So you're going to want to score to the middle, which anyone doing this in the US, down here you'll have two and three quarters. Anyone doing it in the UK, you'll have seven inches. And cut up. Okay. Then you're going to want to go again at five and a half inches. So score to there and cut to there. Okay, the next one is at eight and a quarter inches. Score and trim. And the next one is at 11 inches, just there. So anyone who's doing this in metric, so score and cut. These are two and three quarter of an inch, and two and three quarter of an inch, but if you're doing it in metric, it's seven centimeters by seven centimeters. So instead you need to score at seven, 14, 21 and 28. And again, you've just got that. That's why the trimmer works so well for this. Otherwise, you'd have to use the scoreboard and then cut up the scoring marks. But this just works so well. So just grab your bone folder and a pair of scissors. There they are. So with this bit on the end, your two bits together, you're going to want to just make this bottom one into a tab. So the bit that's scored... And you just want to keep that on and remove the bit that's cut and put it into a tab like that and then just fold dead simple keep folding it over all the way along and you can keep checking it straight because the two lines at the end should meet each other if you don't want it going off like that you see you want it straight Okay, there we go, so it folds into your box, then you want to turn, so where that folds in, you want this to fold out, so turn it the other way, okay, and bend it down, and you only want to bend the outer three, you do not want to bend this one here, it has got the score mark on it, just ignore that, you're going to cover it. Okay, fast fuse, where did I put you? There you are. Mm. Hey, quite a mess of that. There we go. Fold that over and then that should just fold onto the top there. Should create your box bend all your pieces down okay actually I'm going to bend that one down as well so yeah bend all of them down I forgot the reason why this one here where uh, you can't see very very well into that um, that's where the tab is that we created so that's going to be the back okay so that will be the one that stands up but bend it over for the time being so you know where it is then you've got these your two and a half inches by two and a half inch pieces that you are just going to put on there and you should get a slight Bermuda Bay frame around each one you're going to put them around these three You see that one looks a bit darker. I had a my Winky Stella I thought was running out, so I pushed it and it all came out at one time. But you know, we haven't noticed it. It's even, it's even. Okay. Once you've got all of those on this one here, the one with the tab, oh, white 
can't see it, the light's the, the other way. Can you see it? if I go that way? There's the tab inside. I'm going to put that down so it will cover the tab and you won't be able to see it from the outside. Let's do that again with it pointing up towards the camera. So you won't be able to see the tab then from the inside. So just use some fast fuse to stick that down. Actually, I might do it. No, I'm going to do it. I might do it that way. A bit more of the Bermuda Bay on the top part, so there we go. If the bit you can't reach, just flatten it with your bone folder. Okay, so there's the start of my box. I'm now going to grab my Bermuda Bay that I didn't use and my one and three eighths of an inch circle punch. And I'm just going to punch a circle out the corner there. And then I'm just going to run this down. And I'm going to run it down at about three quarters of an inch. I'm going to cut all that off. And then I'm going to cut it at seven centimeters or two and three quarters of an inch. No, I'm really not. Ignore that. Please ignore that. I'm going to cut it at nine centimeters or three and a half inches. And I want two of those. Okay. Then you want to score. So I'm going to go to eight centimeters or three and an eighth of an inch. And score. Turn it round and go to the same measurement three and an eighth of an inch or eight centimeters. Just do the other one the same. Okay. Now what you're gonna do with these is you wanna fold them over and use your bone folder. Just going to grab a bit of the Dazzling Diamonds shimmer paper so it looks like snow and there's there's no preciseness to this I'm doing probably about a quarter of an inch or about half a centimeter really of this and I want it to be seven centimeters long I'm using the Bermuda Bay as a guide because I don't get on very well with cutting the glimmer paper in my trimmer. It just doesn't seem to like it. Okay, so fast fuse. On both of the tabs. And this really does need to be fast fused because it's card onto card and you're going to be sticking bits onto this so you're going to want a really good and heavy adhesive and you're just going to roll that into your card take it down from the top probably about oh half a centimeter about an eighth of an inch two eighths of an inch like that quarter of an inch you don't want it right at the very top can can you see i've just Put it just about that far from the top. Okay, and do exactly the same with the next one with the flaps facing the back because you don't want to see those, they're ugly. Okay. Once you've done that, the best way to get them to stick is to close the box and push on each bit. Okay, and then that will get them stuck down. And it'll also make it a bit more flexible and bendy for you. Once you've done that, your Tombow on the back of your glimmer paper. I find liquid glue much better on the back of your glimmer paper. You can also use glue dots, but my snail or fuse don't seem to work very well on my glimmer paper. I don't know why. And I'm just going to put that right at the top, like that. So that it looks like snow. Okay, 
going to wait a few seconds for that to dry. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I have the whole the circle that I punched out. And I have my tag that I made earlier using the framelits that are in the set. I'm just going to use a little bit of fuse to stick that down. And there's the sentiment, Merry Christmas. It's in the stamp set. She don't need another set for that one. And the sentiment is the right size for this tag fits it just nicely so stamp that down then all I'm going to do is grab my hole punch and I'm going to put a hole through the Bermuda Bay bit that lines up with the tag okay so it's like that and then I have the tinsel fuse all over my finger so it's pulling the tinsel apart. Wasn't a clever idea. Just feed that through. Okay so I'm just going to leave that now and I'm going to come back to this and all of my bits and pieces. Remember I don't have the Christmas tree. It's a shame that Christmas tree was beautiful. <laughs> it really was a gorgeous. It's a typical isn't it? It's the one you lose is always the best one. So I put the snowman at the back, so I just put a bit of fast fuse right onto the bottom of him and stuck him there to the glimmer paper right at the back. And at the front, I put Rudolph, I put the fuse just across the bottom of his tummy, so he was at a lower level to the snowman. I've just ran out of fuse as well, so that's going to not work very well but luckily I stamped them onto Whisper White so I can use my um, my snail and I'm literally just gonna put a little bit of snail onto just one part of my snowflake there so it goes over the back of him one bit onto the smaller snowflake so it can go behind Rudolph. Which bit was the sticky bit? That's the sticky bit. Okay, so it looks like that, glimmering away nicely. And then all I'm going to do on the top is I'm going to take my punch, punch a hole in there, and punch a hole in there. Now I've got three, I haven't, I've got two, okay, I thought I cut the four pieces off, I obviously haven't, these were two and a half by two and a half, so I'm just going to do that again, in fact, I don't know whether you can see what I'm doing, I'm just lining the check up with the runner to see if I can just get three checks in one go for the yeah I can so that it's it's like that blocked so it's two and a half by two and a half so if I just cut that by five because I need two and two saying two in my head I want two and a half by two and a half everything prepared I'd cut two and not four so when you fold this like that okay you want to put this onto the squares at the bottom just to decorate this side if you want to decorate the top because obviously the person you who receives this from you is going to receive it flat and you want to put anything up here by all means go ahead I didn't because when it's open and it's going to be predominantly open they won't really see that bit so I just thought it was a waste but you feel free to de decorate it if you wish and you can run a pretty ribbon around it if you wanted to that would work that would actually look really nice um, when they opened it having a, a sort of a ribbon around here and hide that would look nice 
Okay. So there we go. See, you only kind of see the bottom when it's up. You don't see the top. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to feed the tag through at the top. You, now you will need a whisper white piece that's two and three quarters of an inch by 14, sorry, by five and a half inches. So it's two and a three quarter inch by five and a half inches or it's six and a half centimetres by 13 centimetres and that will fit on the back here as a panel where you can write your sentiment to give it to whomever you wish to give it to. Okay. So I'm just going to do that. Run this through. Oh, come on. There we go. Pull it tight. Tie your knot in it there. And then just chart both of those off so it looks quite tidy there. And then your piece of whisper white that you've cut will sort of it'll sit like that along the back of your card. You can write your sentiment on it to whoever you're sending it to. But that there is the front of your card, minus a tree. And that's the one with the front of the card with a tree. I hope you enjoyed it and it wasn't too long for you. I might do an envelope for it and put the envelope on with the envelope measurements. But I hope you enjoyed the advent project. Thanks, everybody. Bye.